a lot of this has been covered, uh, different cover crop species, blends, you name it. But whether you have a cover crop or not, you have the potential in corn and soybean production to deal with early season and soil insects. This is, and I really don't like this screen being set back like that. But anyway, a lot of these are soil insects, wire worms, seed corn maggots, southern corn root worm, white grubs. Those are immature stages that are in the soil, either when you plant or the eggs are laid shortly after you plant. A lot of times the larvae are already, already there. You have a few more that are not present at that time, although cutworms can be. Sugarcane beetles can be a big problem in the east part of the state. The adults fly in. In this case, it's the adults that's a problem. Uh, chinch bug is an early season pest we have not seen a whole lot of lately, although I can remember in the past when chinch bugs could just be absolutely horrible in corn. Uh, similar complex in uh, soybeans, uh, a few differences. Uh, great Calaspis, we don't see a lot of them. Arkansas sees a lot of those things. Uh, some of the similar ones, alfalfa hoppers, which are an early season above ground problem. Pea weevil, which is pretty much uh, a legume problem. Like I said, uh, whether you use a cover crop or not, if you're in a reduced tillage situation, whether you have a cover crop, you have a lot of native vegetation, you have the potential to deal with, with some or all of these insect pests. And Jeff Gore probably came up with the best analogy I've ever heard using kind of automotive insurance uh, situation. You know, in the south, with our climate, with our pest pressure, and when we plant, it's about like an 18 to 20 year old risk of having a wreck in a car. All right, you start planting into high, heavy residue that you either killed a, de a week before you planted it, or the day you planted it, or in some kind times, three days after you planted it, is about like giving your 16 year old keys to the car, a six pack of beer, a cell phone, and say, all right, have a good time. So, you know, we can put ourselves in some pretty ugly situations. Now, they can be managed. Uh, this is typical symptomology of a soil insect problem in corn. May be a little difficult to see, but it's dead heart. Basically, the growing point or the center of that plant is dying. And when, it, when you see that, that plant is dead. It just doesn't know it yet. Here's a few more various stages. And um, in preparing for this, I kind of went through my trials for the last two or three years and, and kind of put them together, summarized. On average, we're seeing a, year, I mean a, a stand reduction in corn where we don't do anything. And I know all the corn seed is treated, but this kind of gives you the value of that seed treatment, especially in these cover crop and high residue situations. All right, on average, we're looking at 30 bushel difference. I mean, you gain in these trials, and there's 10, 12, 15 of them, you gain about 30 bushels. That's on average, which means in some cases, there wasn't much going on. You didn't have a lot of pressure, even though you had the residue. And in other cases, you had something like this. This is the untreated, this is treated. The absolute cataclysmic situation is this. And I have seen this on commercial fields before. This is probably not common, but this is what we're protecting against. A situation that, you know, if it's on a large enough scale can put you out of business. And here's what it looks like on yield. There's 150 to 180 bushel difference in yield. I mean, I was in Louisiana for a long time. That's where I grew up. A uh, buddy of mine, another entomologist, Roger, Roger Leonard, ran these trials forever. You'd see, two, you'd, and he'd graph them over time. You see 
two, three, four, ten, twelve, eighty. I mean, it's one of those deals. It may not show up once every ten years, once every five years, but if it's a large enough situation, it's devastating. It's devastating to your to to your pocketbook. Beans, we generally do not see this level. We do see some pretty close. This is the pea weevil, pea leaf weevil that folks are talking about. It is generally you only see it behind legumes, whether you're in a legume blend or straight legume. This little joker, depending on how many is there and, and depending on when it hits those plants, can be, yeah, there's a little chewing or this situation where you think the seed wasn't any good and didn't come up. They caught it coming out of the ground and chewed the terminals out. This is from this past year. This is southern corn rootworm where we had virtually no plants left where we did nothing. Now on average, okay, this is on average again. You know, we, we have some reduction in plant stands it, on uh, looking at, say, V3 or V4. It's not a big a deal in beans. Beans can compensate much greater than corn to stand loss. And, you know, we see the typical three to five bushel yield increase when we, when we deal with them. This is the pea weevil field I showed you the picture of. Well, we're 35 to 40 bushels here. I mean, yes, this is uncommon, but it can occur. And I had this big trial this year, and I had a lot of pressure in it in beans, and I'm going to show you a little bit of data out of it, and it's to make a point. What we were doing, we were shooting for 100 to 105,000 plants per acre after, you know, figuring on 80% germination. This is one planting date. Um, I hate not seeing the screen because that means I got to put my glasses on to see this little screen. You know, where we, where we protected the plants or had used a seed treatment, we're 75,000 plants per acre. It's pretty respectable. Okay, this is another planting date, much higher pressure. You know, we're at 25% of that 100 to 105,000 plants per acre that we were trying to get at V1. And, as, and I got to thinking, all right, what's going on? This was a year we had all, I had all the southern corn rootworm out there. I had them in this field. I had some pea weevils. I got to doing some math on the rates on soybean seed treatments. I mean, a lot of them are X ounces per hundredweight. Well, if you're running 3,000, 3,100, 3,200 seed per pound and do the math, the rate range for the seed treatments in beans ranges from 0.07 to 0.178. So the highest is only 70% of our lowest rate in corn. So if you're going into a situation where you have a lot of residue, a lot of legumes, you're terminating very close to planting, it's been warm. All I'm gonna say is the seed treatment that you're used to using may not be enough in this, as it wasn't in this situation. Now this just shows you the ability of soybeans to compensate, and we've known that. Still, where we had just very poor stands, we still made 40 bushels. Now, 10th, May 10th planted beans with the year we had this year, 40 bushels is at this point, and I'm sure most people would agree. Kind of continue on with that, but a little bit differently. Uh, Mr. Adam Whalen's one of our graduate students, been looking at a lot of cover crops and insects, uh, diversity and type of things, as well as some control, some alternative controls. In this case, he was looking at uh, infer treatments with a pyrethroid, uh, putting an insecticide in with a burn down and comparing that to seed treatment as well as increased plant population. As far as 
you know, insects. In this case, you had uh, pea weevil, alfalfa hoppers, bean leaf beetles. We by far had the lowest where we used a seed treatment. And, uh, and that reflected in yield also. There's a little, no, little variability in that. The uh, insecticide in with the burn down wasn't as effective as some of the others. And also looking at kind of damage, and this kind of plays a role in, and several folks have kind of mentioned a little bit, not all cover crops are the same when it comes to the potential risk of insects. From his data, and there's, I see an error in there that I made. Anyway, Vetch, in his studies, afforded a much higher risk, and the other legumes as well. So basically, what we have always said, and it's not changed, is avoid what we call a green bridge, which means green vegetation in the field when you plant. And there are several reasons for that. One is you have, for soil insects, you have a live plant for them to feed on and then you kill it off and your crop is coming up, they just switch over. Also, things that may infest the crop after it comes up or later in the season may be utilizing those plants in the field, whether it's cover crop, native vegetation, whatever, as, an, as a host the, to build populations and they can, may um, infest down the road. Some examples of this, spider mites, usually not a problem in beans. I've seen them in beans. They're absolutely horrible when you get them. Henbit is a great host. The legumes for red banded stink bugs, the legumes for tarnished plant bugs, Bowworm. We can, we can raise some of our own pests in this vegetation before we plant. They move out into ditches or other areas. We kill, we plant, they come back in later. So kind of our recommendations have been, we would like to see this from an insect management standpoint, that that vegetation or this native wild winter vegetation, something you planted, we'd like to see it dead at least three weeks before you plant. Four is better. And that doesn't mean I went out there and sprayed it three weeks, that it is crunchy three weeks. That way, anything that's in there, immatures are going above ground, they run out of something to eat, they can't fly, they're going to starve. Soil insects, they run out of a food source, you'll starve some of those out. Use something to manage insects at planting if you're going into these situations. The risk is, you've seen the risk of what could happen, the extremes. Cutworms have been issues before. We may not have dealt with them much here lately. Cutworms uh, can be devastating. They're easy to control. Our the official recommendation is scout. If you see them, put a pyrethroid or something in with a, with a pre-emerge or the burn down if you're putting it close to planting. Typically, most people, if they're going real close to planting, they just do it anyway. Uh, one pest that I didn't mention that is not an insect that can be just horrible in these situations is slugs. You have this residue, it's keeping the soil damp. Slugs, you get slugs in there, they, they can take a, take a stand out. There's, not, there's little that you can do with them. As far as treating them, it's very expensive. The most things, uh, the best recommendation that we've had in the past is you can get that vegetation dry, let them basically desiccate before you plant or if you have the, the trash wheels on your planter, move that residue out of the top of that row. Scott and I were talking earlier, 
with some of these legumes like winter peas or vetch, and you're killing it real close to the time of planting, those trash wheels may not move in either way. It may just ball up. So slugs is something we tend to forget about, but we have every three or four years we have a bad slug year, and everybody is reminded because it's, they're difficult to deal with. That's what I got. I mean, I'd like to thank the Mississippi Corn and Soybean Promotion Boards for their generous support of us. If y'all got any questions, I'm going to do my best to answer them.